All right, I think we're good enough. So everybody, welcome to our last class of the day. Uh, we are honored to have this artist back with us today, but in a capacity where he's going to be working with other artists. Um, so you know him from many a Broadway show, many a TV show, of course, was currently starring in, uh, is starring in Jagged Little Pill on Broadway uh, that will be back once we are all back doing what we love. Um, so let's please give a huge virtual round of applause and a big welcome to Derek Kletta. Hey guys, thanks for awesome. coming in today. Yay. Awesome. Well, Derek right. is going to be working with these five artists, everybody. We had a little sound check. We know what's going on. So um, I'm going to throw the room over to Derek and have at it. Happy learning, everybody. All right. Hey, guys. So we're going to have five singers today. And I think uh, we'll have probably like 10-ish like minutes um, with each person. And we'll kind of just go through your cuts and try to make the most of like these 30 seconds that we have, like we talked about before. You only get a short chunk of time to show all these different sides of you. So we're gonna try to get the most out of those 30 seconds. Cool. All right. I think we have, uh, Chloe, you're gonna go first, right? Awesome. Yes, hi, hello. Thank you so much. Hi, what are you, what are you singing today? I'll be singing It's <laughs> Over, Isn't It? from Steven Universe. Great. One moment, let me just reverse it so then the volume's just loud enough. All good. War and glory, the invention, judge them for attention. Out in daylight, my potential role for sex experimental. Who am I now in this world without her? Petty and dull with the nerve to doubt her. What does it matter? It's already done. Now I've got to be there for her son. It's over, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it over? It's over, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it over? You won and she chose you and she loved you and she's gone. It's over, isn't it? Why can't I move on? It's over, isn't it? Why can't I move on? Great job. All right. Thank you. That was awesome. Um, I, I love this song. I'm not, I've never heard it before. So please tell me, um, and we'll kind of start each session like this, but all right, who is this person? What's going on? Why are they singing this song? She's singing this song. Uh, her name is Pearl. She had a uh, love interest with another woman who actually turned her down to still be her best friend. And she ended up having a child with somebody and passed away. So there's a bit of a pull wanting to be there for her son, for somebody that she loves so much, but realizing she wasn't the first choice for somebody. And still after all these years of passing and harboring those feelings, not really realizing she still has a problem with uh, the okay. loss. Uh, and then of course, just juggling with still wanting to be there for the son, but then having the dad come in and it be awkward because it's almost like a weird love triangle that was complicated. Yeah. No, totally. So, so what is over? When she's saying it's over, what is, what is the over? There's a few ways that there certain things could be over. Is it over yeah. with her love for Rose was her name? Um, mm -hmm. Or is it over that she's done being upset and bitter and holding all these negative feelings and she can move past, uh, move past those things to move forward? She's, is it over that she's done trying to hold herself back? Is it over that she can't stand being around another person even though they still love them? Got it, cool. Um, I'm just, I'm looking at the lyrics right now. Who am I now in this world without her? So uh, at its core, is she, you know, like you said, she's getting over this, this breakup. She's deciding like how I feel about, uh, how I feel about this. Um, did you mention that she, does she feel a, 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 um, a responsibility to take care of this child? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. 
So I think at, at its core, maybe that is like the ultimate question is like, how involved are you? Um, do you think she's freaking out a little bit? Very much so, absolutely. Okay. And it says, well, why, the last few words of the song are, why can't I move on? It's over, isn't it? Why can't I move on? You want to break free of this situation, and now you're, you're tied in more than you anticip anticipated. So there's panic and all that. But I, I want to go back and do it again. Um, yes. And this time, I, it's so, um, You know when you're lost in thought and you're almost like in shock, like mm -hmm. you can't quite, while you're still figuring out what to do, there's that moment of like, yes, it's panic, but you're almost like frozen. You can't, like your wheels are turning, but you're like, you're like, I don't know what to do. So right now I'm just gonna like stand here and like figure it out before I make a move. It's almost a um, moment to allow breath or allow stillness in a way. Yeah, you're like, it's okay. It's all gonna be fine. Let me just look at this situation and figure it out before I really freak out. Mm -hmm. I think it may be like, let's take it, let's do it again like that with that mentality of, bottom line is like, it, the lyrics are so strong. I think it, it's an endearing song, um, but this is like a less is more is gonna okay. be more powerful. I think there's strength in the stillness of this and watching this person panic and, and, and figure it out for herself to give the audience enough information. So I think, um, yeah, let's, be, let's get lost in that, like not really afraid to, to move much um, or, or, you know, not able to move much, really digesting this problem and coming to a solution. And then maybe that solution is, you know, obviously like, I, I don't know why, but I still love her and I still feel an obligation. Yeah. And there, there is, there's joy in that and reflecting on that love and how she still makes you feel. But then there's also confusion and panic, maybe like you don't know how to handle this situation. It's so uh, use those two, you're getting pulled in both directions and, and you can use those to, to find a different meaning behind all of the it's over. Isn't it? Like you said, it's there. That is kind of a, it means many things. So, mm -hmm go through each one of those and be like, okay, this one is going to be towards our relationship. It's over. Um, my being alone and, and, or not, that you're not, you know, my, my alone time is now over. I'm now taking care of this kid. <laughs> like, yeah. like there's all these different reasons of what that over could be. So as you start to think, just think about that and maybe try to find little, just making them each more a little, a little bit more specific. Okay, awesome. Let me just fix the music cool. real quick. I know I just threw a ton at you. you. Just go for it again. No, I love it. Thank you. Cool, cool. Quick swing. Pretty good. Hydration's key. I love it. <laughs> and then volume level was okay? Yeah, yeah. No, it's great. More and more reinvention, attention, freedom, attention out into life. My potential, more precise, experimental. Who am I now in this world without her? Petty and dull, we put her to down her. What does it matter? It's already done. Now I've got to be there for her son. It's Hold on, really quick, Chloe. Let's go back to this first, this first verse, the war and glory reinvention, fusion, freedom, her attention, out in daylight, my potential, bold, precise, experimental. What is, what is she referring to by this she phrase? Back to glory yeah. days and it was just her and Rose. There wasn't a third party person interested in her named Greg. So it was just Rose and Pearl by themselves, uh, being a team, uh, really investing into a relationship, fighting a battle together, a genuine war together to save their own kind. Um, and also, uh, fusion combining with her and just being their true selves, um, versus having somebody else come in and taking that time away from her or just realizing Rose is choosing another person instead of her. Okay. So this, I, I think it's important to establish at the beginning how this person made you feel. 
Mm -hmm. um, and right now it seems a little bit too, considering the circumstances, it seems a little bit too, I don't want to say casual, but I think the relationship between you, you and her was um, obviously haunts you. Yes. Like whatever, whatever this feeling you had with this person lingers, not necessarily in a good way. Like, I think, I think that's what we have to harness here is that although she's, she's reminiscing and all, all, although that, that relationship um, left like a deep hole in her and she, this person made her feel so many things, I think they're, um, it's more conflicted. It's, mm -hmm. it's less, um, less easy for her to address these things. So at the beginning when you're seeing war and glory reinvention, like, maybe imagine the first time that you guys like went on a date together or something and how like she gave you butterflies and maybe she was like an intense person and there was like a deepness there that yeah I, I always 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 lean on the side of it being like a deep uh experience it wasn't like a it wasn't like a flirty fling it was right you know, it was, it was a serious relationship, something like you've never had before. And that's why you're having such a hard time getting over it. So, yeah. at, um, so let's start again from the top and just picture like that first date together, the first time you saw this person and how you were taken back. And maybe, um, I mean, yeah, she says out in daylight, my potential bold, precise, experimental, like those are all intense descriptions, um, mm -hmm. experimental meaning like, you know, it's, promiscuous there's young love there it's sensual so I think it embrace all of that like this was like not a fling like yeah. her beauty and the way she touched you haunts you to this day in a way okay. Thank so you. Let's, let's lean in that way and see what we got more and more reinvention love and tension out in daylight potential, bold, precise, experimental. Who am I now in this world without her? Petty and dull with the nerve to doubt her. What does it matter? It's already done. Now I've got to be there for her star. It's over, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it over? It's over, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it over? You won and she chose you and she loved you and she's gone. It's over, isn't it? Why can't I move on? It's over, isn't it? Why can't I move on? Right. <clears throat> cool. We just have like a couple, like a minute left. Um, that was all really, really great work. I, I, I want you to take away, like, this is what I, this is what I got from watching it that last time. There are okay. three different parts. And I, I do this usually like when I break down songs, instead of looking at it as a whole, look at it as you were watching this. And this is the great cut because this character does go on like a little mini journey. You're able to show so many different facets of yourself. And <clears throat> so I, I would label like the first part of this is like reflection, right? She's re reminding her of the relationship with this girl. Obviously it was, it was intense. It was bold. It was experimental, all of these things. And then when you get to that's part one is like, oh my gosh, she still haunts me. I still have those feelings. Why can't I get rid of them? And then the, who am I now in this world without her? That's panic. That's an identity crisis. Like, like, I think that's the breaking point of like, oh my gosh, like I've been attached to her for so long. I don't even know who I am anymore. Yeah. Like if I, I have to figure myself out before I can, I can raise another person. Like, right. So that, so the first part, reflection, second part, panic. And then you get to, um, it's over, isn't it? it? It isn't it? Like maybe that is acceptance. Like then we've moved on to being like, okay, it's going to be fine that part of my life's over. You can move on from this. Um, you won, she chose you, she loved you, she's gone. It's over, it's over, it's over, acceptance. And then maybe like, and then there's a light bulb at the end. Why can't I move on? It's over, why can't I move on? She loves you and she's gone. 
So that's like the little mini week journey we go on. We go reflection, panic, acceptance, and maybe, maybe you can even change the plot and be like, maybe there's confidence. Maybe there's room at the end to show like that you're the still power, like strong, powerful, independent woman now. And maybe you can have a moment of, of like, I'm in this predicament, but I'm strong enough, I can handle it. And then you pick yourself up. So there's like a little bit of an up, uplift at the end, just to show a little bit of that. So we're not dwelling the whole time. Correct, yeah, um, there's peaks and valleys. Yeah, just show that strength that you are capable to at the end. Um, but really great work. I think this, this, this cut is awesome for you and you get to show lots of different layers and cool, very fun. You're awesome. Thank you, thank you so, so much. Thank you, thanks, Chloe. Right. Who do we have next? Do we have um, me, Angelica? <laughs> yes. All right. Great. Hi. Um, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good. Um, I what will be singing? singing before it's over from Dogfight. Great. And let me just get that started. I've been the girl who fades away, accepting what I've got stuck in what I am and everything I'm not. I've only seen this tiny world I'm in where I can only be what I've been. Sing a world beautiful and strange spinning off somewhere saying meet me there. Singing for the close and reach for me. See that you've got so much more to be before it's over. Before it's over. Nice. Beautiful. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, I don't know that song at all. <laughs> no, no, not at all. It's such a mystery. <laughs> all right. Um, so tell me a little bit about Rose and, and where she's at. What's what's taking place? Why is she singing this? Yeah, so Rose and Eddie just went on their first date. It's his last night. They're kind of that whole song, obviously, right before. Mm -hmm. um, and something is, I think, sparked within both of them. Like, they both see something in each other. And the fact that Eddie sees something in Rose, Rose is like, wait, there's like, such a world out here that I never even thought to consider and to explore and there's so much more that I can do within myself and experience and it's Eddie I think is kind of like that catalyst that sparks that. Yeah totally um what are three adjectives you would use to describe Rose not necessarily in the song but just as a, as a person yeah um I'd probably use, God, insecure sounds so mean, but timid. No, it's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's the truth I mean, it's honest. Yeah. So I guess I would say like insecure or unconfident, um, kind hearted and optimistic. Yeah. I think all of those things are really, really good. I was, you know, I think at her core, even though she's maybe timid and and lacks a little bit of self confidence, she is a strong girl who, who obviously like, can stand up for herself. Like yeah. she knows that she she has these ambitions and these dreams and and these things, and she knows she can accomplish them someday. And it's it's really interesting that both. Um, you know, they, they, Rose and Eddie go on this night together that they, they both need each other for different things. And for, for one, way, one way or another, they open each other's eyes. She has obviously affected and changed Eddie for the better. And now, now, and now because she met him and she's seen the dark and come out of it um, with, a, with a deeper understanding for the, the world that they live in and for this, this person who she started a night with, I think, it's almost like she's seeing her city for the first time. Mm -hmm. She's a girl that doesn't get out much. Yeah. She, she's stuck in a diner with her mom, helping her mom all the time. And that's usually 
that's her comfort zone. She's not, she's not usually one to take that risk. And she does take the risk. She crashes and burns, but the night ends up turning around. And now she, she feels like she can conquer the world. She's been to hell and back, if, if you will. And she's still that strong, confident girl. Now she has a newfound appreciation for herself. So, so um, what was the first lyric? Did you start from the beginning? No, I started on like the or, where, where did you start? Beginning. Um, I started on, oh God, what did I start on? <laughs> I've been that I've girl, been I've been that girl who fades away. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, great. So this like, let's do it again. And, and at the beginning from, I've been that girl who fades away. Um, except what I've got, stuck in what I am and everything I'm not. She's almost, picture it like she can't even recognize the person she was before. Yeah. because her whole world has been flipped upside down. She's like, everything I thought I knew before, I, I had no idea. Yeah. And it, it's kind of like, this is an epiphany moment. It's, it's the apex of this character's trajectory. She's gone through all of this, all these obstacles, and now she's finally at the top and and doing herself and her city for, in, in a different way. Um, let's, let's just sing it again with that mind. Um, that she, that, that at, at her core, she's, she can't even recognize her old self. Someone you ask out as a joke. I've been that girl who fades away, accepting what I've got, stuck in what I am, and everything I'm not. I've only seen this tiny world I'm in, where I can only be what I've been. Hold on, Angelica, I'm going to stop you really quick. Yes. Um, who, who are you singing to? Um, it feels introspective to me, but I just, I don't, yeah, it just feels no, very introspective. It is. It totally is. Um, right then, it seemed like you were taking in a lot of scenery. When you, when you like, when you're stuck or like daydreaming or, or like you get caught in thought. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, um, <laughs> let's let's find a focal point to to focus our energy on because i feel like when you do get introspective introspective and you do start to reflect um on a certain scenario or a person or something you get you you get locked in and like in a trance on something mm -hmm. whether or not let's let's pretend like you're on the bridge right now you're on the bridge and maybe you can see your diner shop like in the middle of, of San Francisco, like the light is still on, your mom's has her light still on waiting for you to come home. And like, you're watching that diner, just thinking about like, how can I go back? How can I go back after this night that I've had? Yeah. And you're zeroed on on that reflecting, um, reflecting on the night that you had and your old self, and then maybe on see the world beautiful and strange, that's when you can pull it out to the endless possibility that's out in the world. But I think we need to we need to really focus on what she's addressing and um, and if and if our eye line and our and our uh, perspective shifts too much, then we start to lose yeah. it, it doesn't, you know, we start to lose our perspective or, or it doesn't get as specific. Um, so let's let's do that. Let's picture you're you're honing in on your diner and then you can pull back out on see a world. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. It's just like the technical things that <laughs> make a world of difference. And, and through Zoom, it's even more apparent because I'm like, all I can see is your face and your eyes. It's just me. No, it's good. It's all good things. I've been the girl who fades away, accepting what I've got, stuck in what I am, and everything I'm not. I've only seen this tiny world I'm in, where I can only be what I've been. See a world beautiful and strange, spinning off somewhere, saying meet me there. Look, look, how fast it runs away, singing for the clothes. And reach 
reach for me. Sing, you've got so much more to be. Before it's over, before it's over. That was awesome. That was awesome. I'm sure everybody else could see how by taking away the, I know if, like that, that, that's an example of when people say like, don't use your hands, don't um, stop swaying. It's, it's not that you can't use your hands and you can't sway or you can't make movements. It's just, if we limit the distractions, all of a sudden we're able to focus on the things that matter. And that was perfect. You took, you stripped everything away. We saw it, we exactly, we knew exactly where you were. I could tell, I could tell in your eyes, what was going on, what you were addressing. It was really specific. And then we did see the world. There was a little moment where you went, see the world, beautiful and strange. And then we lost your eyes. And then you came back and you locked on to like the, the out open. And that place where you locked back in, that's where you should remain. It's like the smallest little things, even though you do like, see the world, beautiful and strange, and you open it back up, you go from here, see, like seeing your diner, and then it could be as small as like, see the world, beautiful and strange. Like just seeing your eyes move off that is totally enough. And this song is so beautiful, especially for ballads that have great lyrics like this. Less is more. Right. And you sing it so well that just trust that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And you, you understand it. It's just like those little technical things make a world of difference. Um, but great job. Really, really great job, Angelica. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, who we got next? Do we have Taya? Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. <clears throat> hey Taya, what are you singing today? Um, I am singing Omar Sharif from the band's visit. Awesome. And the living room becomes a garden, and the TV set becomes a fountain, and the music flows in the garden, and everything grows. came floating on it. Lonely, flying in on a jasmine wind, um, kutum, doma, shari, and we danced with them in a jasmine scented Cool, beautiful. That was really, really, really great. You sound beautiful, it's a good song for you. Um, tell me uh, a little bit about this story that, um, that what's her name? What's this character's name? Dina. Dina. Um, so why is she telling this tale? Who's there with her? What's, what's going on? Yeah, so um, the whole premise of the show, it takes place in over 24 hours. Um, mm -hmm. And so a, orchestra gets accidentally sent to this town in the middle of nowhere um, oh yeah no i totally I, i'm there with you but right. just what's what's happening yeah, yeah, yeah. in this like a very like this scene what you call it? so I, she's kind of reliving like her childhood and the things that used to make her feel a certain type of way because things have been so blasé and like in a stasis for so long and so she's reflecting on like her, her childhood, she's kind of going back to like how imaginative and beautiful it is to create these worlds, um, even though you're not really there and how like uh, music and TV and those things can transport you. And she's relating to the <clears throat> colonel, who's the leader of that group. Right, awesome. The tricky part with this, and I think it's a great cut and I think it, it does everything, but we start we start at the peak of the song. Yeah, 
which I is had, always really hard to do. I had a lot of trouble um, finding a good cut because it's either a little too long or it has to start here or I have to end it right after this part. And so it gets, I got a little confused on where to cut it. Yeah, no, I, um, I think it's actually a great cut. Okay. I think um, what I was trying to say is like, we just gotta, we gotta grab them a different way from the top. You know, we, we have to be locked in right away. And I think you gotta come out guns blazing. Let's do it again um, and just hop right back into it one more time. And, and immediately picture that, um, you know, picture yourself as this little girl who like was taken by by this TV and how her imagination just ran wild and it became like this, like all of a sudden you were engulfed with things you'd never seen or felt before. Um, and, it, and it did that for you. Um, all of those emotions are super, super high. If, if we're gonna visualize this cut or this song, I mean, you're starting at the top of your hill, you're starting at the top of your hill, you're plateauing through, and the music flows in the garden and everything grows. And then we could start to work our way down the hill of like intensity okay. back to like, imagine like as a little girl, you were lifted off the couch in a way just to like, I don't know. It helps me to visualize like what that image would be like cinematically um, just for like the emotional flow of it. Just picture like as a girl, you're lifted off the couch and like all these, all this imagery is swirling in your brain, overtaking you. And then, and then with the, uh, um, that came came floating in on on a lemon leaf flying in on a jasmine uh, and a jasmine wind that part kind of helps you I don't know you could picture your your childhood self like all of a sudden seeing this person and landing gracefully back on the couch and how that was just like a perfect memory um, that you hold sacred that you've chosen to share with this person um, okay enough talking we'll do, we'll do true it again with all that said. <laughs> <clears throat> and the living room becomes a garden and the tv set becomes a fountain and the music flows in the garden and everything grows <laughs> came floating on a dead on leaf, flying in on a jasmine wind, um, um, and Omar Sharif, and we danced with them in a jasmine scented Nice. That was beautiful. That was awesome. <clears throat> the way you navigated that is, I mean, you're already doing such a good job with the song. I'm just being like super nitpicky. But after the, um, and the living room becomes a god and the music flows like god and everything goes, him floating in on Jasmine Leaf. Just watch your hands. Um, too much, too much sorcery movement starts, it starts, it all becomes, if you do it too much, then all of a sudden, like the first two, two times that you do it, they lose their, their importance and their spe uh, specificity. So um, we can get creative with movement if we, if we feel inclined to move, but I don't think you need it on after um, and everything grows. I think if you want to like clutch yourself or internalize some of that, it's good, but I think we can, we can lose the hands because it, it starts to get a little bit more focused towards the end. And then maybe because this whole cut is so positive and it's such a positive memory for this girl that we can end almost on a darker note, um, just to show the full spectrum of you. Maybe the last thought we can think about is, like obviously this is like one of your childhood, like one of your favorite memories from your childhood. It's something that you hold near and dear to your heart maybe there's a little bit of i'll never feel that again at the end okay and 
like I'm stuck in this like humdrum life that I'm in. Maybe that's where we can end. And then, let, yeah, I think I think try to try to end on that darker note. And I think that will kind of button it in a cool, creative way. Cool. Okay. Cool. Great job. That was awesome. I think I think we're we're good on time. But you're you're fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, Delaney. Hi. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm good. Sorry, I'm moving my camera. Um, hi. <laughs> um, I'm gonna be singing "I'm Not Afraid of Anything" from Songs for a New World. Um, right. I'm gonna get this pulled up. And David loves me. He's a Afraid to tell me. David loves. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> okay. Okay. And David loves me. He's afraid to tell me. David loves me. He's afraid to trust me. He's afraid to hold me. And he'll always be. He's afraid of me. But I'm not afraid of anyone. I am sure to win with anyone at all. I'm not afraid of anyone. Not a soul alive can get behind this wall. So let them call and watch them fall. Cause after all, I'm not afraid. Great. Great job. Um, your voice is awesome. Let's, you too, you pick up like right in the heat of the song. <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta start like guns blazing. Not too short or too long? Uh, the, first, the first part was, and David loves me, he's afraid to tell me, right? Yeah. Is that where you started? And David loves me, he's afraid to trust me. He's afraid to hold me to always be. Um, I think, uh, tell me a little bit about, um, Okay, just to give us a recap on this girl's journey through this song and, and what she's singing about. Um, well, she starts off talking about her friends, Jenny and Katie, and then her parents. And um, fear is so consuming. And um, she just prides herself and is so headstrong and not being afraid and like wanting to experience everything. Um, so that's kind of what it's about. And then David is her, her boyfriend. And like, it just, it gets all confusing. And she's like, that's a lot of feelings. And he's afraid to tell her that he loves her and she's like well I can't do this so yeah um no totally yeah I think what sticks out to me in this song is that it seems like she's had everything figured out like she's never really like everything's just kind of happened like and she's like no I'm I'm, I'm fearless I can go into any situation and like I know how to handle it. Um, but I think love is something that is, is the most confusing of all. And, for, and now she's, she's used to throwing up this, obviously she's used to throwing up this wall to protect herself. Um, that's the tricky part with this part of the song is finding that middle ground of anger, frustration, and fear. Which one do you think she feels most? Um, or and, and confusion, throw confusion in there. Yeah. I think that it's a mix of both. Um, when she's talking about David, I think that there's a little bit of like, oh my gosh, like he loves me. And then there's like fear that comes with it because he's afraid to trust her. And like, that's a scary situation to be put in. Um, so I think a lot of that is fear. And then when she says um, he's afraid of me, I think that's like anger. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, no, totally. It's, um, she's convinced herself 
that he loves her and that they love each other and they're going to get married and have this beautiful life just like their friends. And I think she's maybe not willing to admit that it's not going to work out. And so by, by addressing that, she's, she's running in a way. Um, so I think what you did beautifully at the top is start with that, like, like, Obviously, you're still in that relationship. Your hopes are up that, like, maybe he's going to reveal himself. Um, maybe he will open up. No, he won't. And now he doesn't want to hold my hand. Like, something's going on. And then the, the afraid of me moment, he's afraid of me. That's the, that's the worst thing that anyone could ever say to you. And it throws you into a full panic. I think... The panic was great, what you had before, but let's work on or, or try to shift her, her like freaking out mm -hmm. to more of like the, uh, what we were talking about with, sorry, with, with Chloe in the way when you're, when you're lost in thought, you're kind of in, in that shock moment. Um, and her immediate, her immediate thing is to throw up this wall and not feel it. So I think, if you feel it too much through that, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of anyone. I'm sure to win with anyone at all. Like you were constantly fighting that battle, battle of slipping into despair and desperation and freaking out, but you're not letting yourself. So we should be watching this person who's too proud to fall apart, barely hold her ground. And um, let's do it again with that in mind, that it's not necessarily, she's not freaking out yet. She's like on the verge of freaking out. Okay. But she, but she won't let herself do it. Cool. Cool. And David loves me. He's afraid to tell me. He's afraid to trust me. He's afraid to hold me. And he'll always be. He's afraid of me. But I'm not. Hold, hold, hold on, really. Delaney, really quick. Before yeah. you started wailing, I caught one more thing. Um, let's, let's not. Um, be like mezzo piano until he's afraid of me and use the me to crescendo into that i'm not afraid of anything i think before that it's we can keep it uh like you and him are having an intimate conversation and we're just catching your inner monologue as as okay. as, as this actual like experience is unfolding um and then i think that me is maybe like to physicalize it or to picture it, it's you like backing away from that situation and throwing up that wall that sends you into that. No, not today. Not gonna feel that. No, we'll just, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Way of like not wanting to address the problem. Cool, okay. let's do it again. Um. And Dave loves me. He's afraid to tell me. David loves me. He's afraid to trust me. He's afraid to hold me. And he'll always be. He's afraid of me. But I I am sure to win with anyone at all. I'm not afraid of anything. Not a soul alive can get behind this wall. So let them call and watch them fall. Because after all, I'm not afraid. Cool. Beautiful. Um, one last thought for the end of this. Um, 
And I'm not afraid of anyone. I'm sure to win without anyone at all. I'm not afraid of anyone. Not a soul alive can get behind this wall. Bing. I think that's where, like, all of a sudden, you're back to your old self. Like, like nothing's wrong. Like, it's everything's fine. So let them call, watch them fall, because after all, I'm not afraid. I think if we watch you flip on a dime to being like, what's wrong? Yeah. Everything's totally cool. But like, obviously under the surface, there's, it's like one of those moments where you're like, yeah, yeah, no, 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 I'm totally good. I'm good. It's like, it's, it's one of those moments of, oh, and she's back. She's, this, this person is like slipped back into that place. So this, visually, this song, like you start, you start here, you go up that hill of I'm not afraid of anyone, panic, 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 come back down to, no, I'm good. I'm just, I'm in my resting place. I do what I always did. I threw up my wall. Everything's going to be fine. And I think that will, that's kind of like, I, I don't know. I think it'll be an interesting twist yeah. at the end and, and unsettling, which it should be. Because if you do end sad and kind of, or not necessarily sad, but resistant and fearful, then it feels like, I don't know. I think, I think it's just, it's, it's more, it's more ambiguous and stronger if yeah. we see her revert back to that, like optimistic, like, no, no, it's going to be fine. He'll, he'll change his mind tomorrow type mentality. Yeah. Cause it's just this roller coaster this person's on and it's hard to watch, <laughs> but it's good. Um, awesome. Thank you so much, Blaney. Your voice oh is fantastic. Thank Nailed you. it. Yeah. Um, all right, Joey, let's bring it home. Yay, okay, thank you. Um, I'm Joey, I'll be singing Out There from Hunchback of Notre Dame. Awesome. <laughs> Out there strolling by the sand Taste a morning out there like ordinary men who freely walk about there just one day and then I swear I'll be content with my share. Won't resent, won't despair, old and bent. I won't care, I'll ask Ben one day out there. Great. Awesome, Joey. That's a hard saying. Um, you sounded awesome. Let's give me a little background on on who um who who quasi is why is he singing this song what's his current predicament yes uh so in this time he's uh in a tower like in a i would say like an attic and say um <laughs> and the bell you know, tower. He's, <laughs> and he's been by himself for pretty much his whole life like he's only had one person of contact, which is um, his father. Um, and except like these people from down below. And I think he sort of makes his own connections with these people and he's just reminiscing and sort of trying to live his life through them and just imagining what it would be like to actually walk on the ground where they stood and what it would feel like to be normal in a sense, because I think he was always told he was ugly, he's abnormal. His name, Quasimodo, means childlike infant. And I think that's, for Quasimodo, I, I see him as like a, a pure optimist. Like he just wants, like even though he sort of knows these things aren't great, like his circumstances, he'll still make light of it and he'll still try to give respect and do the best he can in his circumstances. So. Yeah, totally. All right. Um... Also, I, I think that he's, he doesn't know what he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. he, he's, he's naive to the real world. All, he's been sheltered his whole life. Therefore, he hasn't been exposed to the darkness of the world. So there's still that, 
I mean, this is like Quasi's I Want song, if you would. Like every every right. movie, every every musical, every every has it. Our protagonist has their I Want song. And this is Quasi's. He just wants that one day that I, I'm at that one day he's been idolizing about his whole life mm. of, of being among the people and what he do. Um, name three, give me three adjectives that would describe Quasi. Hmm. Imaginative. Uh optimistic uh lonely i guess if that's yeah fair. yeah i think the, the the trick with the hard part about this song and this cut in particular is we want to find different layers than just i hope to be out there one day like right. instead of just hopeful i mean i think above up along with hopeful and, and along with positive, he's also super determined, um, obviously a hard worker and, and a devoted friend and son. Um, where, what was the lyric that you started this cut? Uh, out there strolling by the sand, uh, takes the morning out there like ordinary men. Strolling by the sand. Awesome. Okay, so we're at, maybe at the beginning, you could be peak, like, basking in that perfect day. Mm -hmm. Like, we could show up until strolling by the sun. Oh, man, that's, like, that is just the, what I hope for my entire life. Like, if, if, my, if my life died tomorrow when I got to do that, I'd be a happy man. Taste the morning out there like ordinary men. If you really walk about there just one day, and then I swear I'll be content with my share. During the just one day and then I swear I'll be content. Maybe we shift to, like he's got his game face on, like, all right, it's time, it's time to make that happen. Maybe that's where we switch into like determined and mm. willing to risk it all for that day. So we go from basking in the glory of that perfect day of being with the people to I, I know it's gonna, it's gonna take a lot. Um, I'm ready for that chance. Although it's scary, I'm ready. I'm ready to put myself out there and then, um, and then we can we can bask again in in that one day out there, the last out there. We mm. could we could go back up the hill to that perfect day and you living in it. But just in the middle of there, let's try to find a little bit of that fear, a little bit of that determination alongside <clears throat> his his positivity and his his light. Cool. Yeah, okay. Cool. Let's do it. Out there, strolling by the sand, taste a morning out there, an ordinary man can freely walk about there just one day, and then I swear I'll be content with my share won't you sent <laughs> no you're good you're good you're totally good i want to say yeah no one more thing um what are you looking up when you look up uh so long story short i think quasimodo isn't very like faithful like he everyone talks about god but like he's like just disformed so think god doesn't care about him so i think that's his one time prayer like i never asked you for anything but like i'm gonna it's sort of like his prayer last first and last prayer to god i guess okay i buy it perfect cool. <laughs> technically technically just lower the lower your eye light so we don't see your neck we still want to stay with your eyes so even if you are if you're in an audition room obviously like your, your resting place is going to be right above their heads, the fourth wall, straight mm -hmm. to the back of the wall. But instead of putting the sky up there, all you have mm -hmm. to do is put the sky there. Mm -hmm. And like, and then we return down where it's just like a small move, but we don't lose your face. We don't lose your eyes. And all of a sudden we don't see you go. <laughs> and it's also a lot harder to sing like that. So yeah. make it easier on yourself and just, and just lift it just a little bit, just a little bit in the room. Um, okay will make a world of difference. Let's do it again cool. from the top. Gotcha. Cool. Out there, strolling 
why the sand takes a morning out there like ordinary men who freely walk about there just one day and then i swear i'll be content with my share won't resent won't despair old and bent i won't care i'll have been one day That was it. Dude, that was awesome. That was awesome. One little thing that I that I I noticed that you can you can fiddle with. Um the where is it? Um when you said like ordinary men freely walk about there just one day and then I swear I'll be content. Just one day and then that part where you are like praying basically, I think take that really seriously. Oh shit. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Are you okay? The, the crud out of me. No, I don't even know what fell. I don't know. It was like a box that slipped. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, don't mind me just falling on my, my side of things. <laughs> it's late here. It's seven here. It's four there. So oh it's good. Gosh. Um, uh, but no, okay. So that part, when you're doing your prayer, I think since you said yourself, he's not used to doing that. He's a guy mm -hmm. that's you know, God's never looked out for him. So why should I care? Right. But that's the one moment where he's digging deep. I would hold off on the celebratory part of the last part of the song until um, use won't resent, won't, won't despair to pull yourself out of that seriousness and back into the light. Because then by, mm. by I won't care, mm. Use that as being back to that place. Um, but hold on to that determination and taking that moment very seriously of like, I promise I won't do this. I won't do this. I won't resent. I won't despair. I don't care. And that's when you, that's when you blast off again. Um, yeah. Just so we don't peak too soon. I, don't, I, mm -hmm. I just don't want us to get to that glory of that perfect day quite yet until I won't care. Yeah. And then, and then you can let it soar. But I think hold back until that point. So you have um, from just one day and then I swear I'll be content with my share. Won't resent, won't despair. Old and bent, I won't care. So until from, uh, yeah, just one day and then to old and bent, I won't care. That's your determination, taking it seriously. And you can show a little bit of that, that earnest, determined, darker side to him mm. darker it's not dark but right. you know what i mean yeah. um and then you can just let it soar and then we have a really nice journey uh and it's not so like oh look quasi's doing it <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh look at him go like oh, we because this past like i could see it in your eyes and you and this past time that it was so endearing i just think if you hold on to that determination and that like that seriousness a little bit longer mm -hmm. then the payoff will be that much greater um but very very great work that's a hard saying and you made it sound easy so great job oh, man thank you thank you thank you yeah, yeah yeah you guys all rock today that was awesome you guys a huge round of applause for these artists who uh did such a vulnerable thing to get on and perform <laughs> for a bunch of people they don't know and get critiqued and and uh a huge huge round of applause for uh, my friend here, Derek Klenna, who came on uh, a second time and did this workshop. We love you guys. Um, thank you so much. Stay safe. Uh, send our love to your beautiful wife and your amazing family. And hey, see you too. Uh, yeah, we can't wait for all of us to be back doing what we love in the same room, watching a show, being in a show, all of the above. So I know we're all in this together, but um, we thank you for sharing your time and helping, uh, helping the community out while you're sheltering in place so thanks man thank you thank you guys you guys were all amazing thanks for the people who came and watched lots of love to to california and beyond yes you guys. um you guys so we're wrapped for yeah. the day but we have um amazing sessions tomorrow and friday we have uh...